I have quite a smorgasbord of favorite memories from here. Hi, I'm Chuck. Good, good, good. So here's... Uh, James Brown, uh, the king of soul. I love Phantom of the Opera. Then July 1st, 1997. I saw Journey in concert, and I saw Foreigner and the great, the late B.B. King. Sesame Street shows are like the Paw Patrol shows. Um, Eddie Money, he's right next to Blue's Clues. <laughs> oh, nice. I, oh, you know what, there was one time when you were you were called on stage. Oh, I was. I was able to finally make my ballet debut as a, a guest wizard. To choose one memory would be probably really hard. It's a place where this community comes together. It is acoustically almost perfect. The night we got engaged. Amanda. He was just starting out. Funny guy. This is my first time being here inside the Morris Theater, but from everything that I'm seeing around me, I think it's probably already my favorite theater that, I, that I've ever been to. There were some true believers that hung around the stage. B.B. King sat down in a folding chair, stage left. The fans came up to him. There were about three dozen people at that point, and it was almost like they were greeting royalty. I walked up, got a chance to tell him how much I enjoyed his concert. I shook his hand. From that point forward, I was a huge fan of B.B. King and understood a little bit more about the blues. And it was for the Beatles um, tribute band. My mom's in her 70s, uh, grew up with the Beatles. It was music that she always shared with us as children and that I've had the opportunity to share with my children. And we were sitting up in the balcony and I just remember looking over at the joy in my mom's face to be able to share this like, music with me and her grandchildren. And we all knew the lyrics too, so we were all singing, I want to hold your hand together. And it was like, I look to my right, I see my mom's joyful face. I look to my left, I see my daughter's joyful face. And it was just a great show and um, just a great moment for our family. There have been a couple of bad memories. You noticed, even as a kid, that it was falling apart. I remember my mom talking about it and being like, oh, it's getting really bad, right? Like there was this kind of like, fatalistic conversation happening about it. In 1957, we read in the South Bend Tribune that this building was going to be demolished, that the palace would no longer exist. But luckily enough, we had a great citizen named Ella Morris who said, no, I will not let this auditorium be sold. I'm going to buy it and give it to the community. Well, what a wonderful gift. When South Bend started changing, you have to look at this theater's repair and expansion as the beginning of that. They invested, as they should, into something that creates the foundational culture of South Bend. Now, it is the Morris Performing Arts Center, and what a wonderful thing for South Bend. And it's having its 100th birthday, and I say, happy birthday, Morris Performing Arts Center. Love you.